everybody, welcome back to the Spurs 9501 podcast. I've got Richard with me from the Charlottesville Spurs Supporters Club, and he's going to do give us his views on the, the recent win we had against Sheffield United. So, Richard, yeah. welcome to the, the podcast. Great to be here. Thank you very much. So tell us, Richard, first, what did you think about the formation that Jose played yesterday? Uh, we, we, it was a three three backs, three centre backs with, you know, ring, wingers going up and down. What do you think of that formation? Because he doesn't normally play that formation. You know what? I mean, um, honestly, when I first saw, like everybody, I, I wait for the hour before the match to, to look at the lineup. And when I first saw it, I said, oh, five defenders, you know, against Sheffield. You know, I mean, I just... I was a little bit perplexed. Then I had to get over Deli Ali not even being on the squad. So I went through those whole range of emotions. And then when I sort of looked at it and said, yeah, there's three backs and it lets, you know, Reguillon sort of go run up and, and Oreo run up. Um, I said, it'll be interesting. I didn't know how it would really work. Um, but I, I think, and I'm sure you're going to, you, you'll ask this question with, with Bergwijn in, uh, up at the wing, it just makes all the difference between anything we do. And I think looking back at the last probably 10 games, um, we need him, you know, he, he just does stuff. He's There's something when he's in the offense that makes our team better. And I think he and Aurier looked really well in that formation together. Sure. Uh, I don't know how it works. I don't know why it works, mm-hmm. but um, I thought we were going to be super defensive like everybody's been complaining about. Yeah. But then right when the game went, it just seemed to go. And, you know, I thought Roden was able to hold down the four really, really well. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I was, didn't yeah, know what to make point. of it. I yeah. didn't even know how to, what kind of lineup it was until I had to actually put it on paper and sort yeah, of sure. look at it. But yeah. yeah. So basically, okay. So that's, um, I mean, I think um, he was sort of trying to match Sheffield United because they always play back five. But yep. talk about, t- tell us what you thought about the performance of some of the, uh, the new players that came in, like Rodon. And Bergwijn, you know, these guys came in after being out for one. Specifically, Joe Rodon. How do you think he did in the, in the back? I, I mean, I thought he was. If it wasn't for Indom Pele, which we're calling him out here, um, he might have been close to man of the match. I, I yeah. thought he won all of his challenges. He was fantastic. You yeah. know, um, I, he's. It took him a while, I guess. I don't know what his story's been. It's hard to figure out. This is my first, like anybody with Jose, following Jose Mourinho, he's, he's really hard to figure out why players he likes and why players he plays and players he doesn't. Uh, you know, Rodon was one of those ones where he looks the part. And I think yesterday, um, as far as I know, I, don't, I didn't look at him statistically, but I'm pretty sure out of Davies and Dyer, he was statistically the best um, back we had. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, he looks fantastic. And yeah, he looks like a, a really good prospect. He's really young and he's hungry yeah. to learn. All right, he's going to make a few mistakes, but he's young. So yeah, he's gonna he didn't good. make any yesterday. No, no, I agree with you. He played <laughs> really well. I mean, we've been pushing for Rodon to be playing. I don't know why, and I've got nothing against Davinson Sanchez, but I think Rodon is a better bet than Sanchez. But, you know, you it. won't. I'm not going to argue with I mean, uh, you, you <laughs> trust me, I'm with you on that one. Yeah, I, yeah, okay. You know, we can argue about that all day, but I'm with you. I thought Roden, hopefully he's earned his place uh, yeah, yeah. And, and moving forward. I, I will say this, having seen it, when I was first saw the lineup, I, I just don't understand why Toby played well, uh, versus Marin. And yeah, he I was going to ask you about that. What do you think about – so firstly, um, Eric Dyer is like a favourite of uh, Mourinho. So unless Dyer can't play, he was always going to play. The question we're always asking, I want to get your thoughts. Why do you think Toby is not being played? What's the problem there? I mean, that was one of the questions. Uh, I, I could not believe that he played versus, uh, um, you know, Marin. Marine, how, yeah, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Uh, oh, and Marine, yeah, Marine, yeah, yeah, Marine. Marine and he sat him. against a Fulham. That just, it didn't make any sense to me. I mean, I've always thought he's been, you know, I'm, since I've been a Spurs fan, he's always been there. He's always played hard. Um I don't know what to make of it. Again, it's it's. I think it's we're all under this new Jose regime. It's super yeah, hard I mean, to figure out. He's very complicated, and for him to sit two games, maybe that was for Rodin to, to get experience. But uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of Davies. Um, yeah, I, I thought well, he played. I think okay. Jose likes him because he can play as a left back or a cent- or centre back left. So. Yeah, I, I, yeah. So that's it. But yeah, Dyer. I mean, Dyer has been on the end of two. You know, the header was. 
against Fulham was, unex- I mean, in my opinion, was was bad. And then yeah. that, another header, he was right there. It kind of went between him and Davies. Yeah, just... But I don't know what what's Toby going to do. I mean, he's one of our, he's our best back in my in my opinion. I he, agree with you. I mean, most fans. All I can think of is being saved for Liverpool or basically Toby is over 30 now. So his, his pace is not as great, but even yeah. having said that, he's still our best center back. There's no, doubt I agree. So 100%. nobody knows what's happening here. Um, talk, talk a bit about Stevie B, Stephen Bergwijn. I was happy to see him. I mean, the problem with Stephen is he missed two glorious chances against Liverpool. And then, you know, Jose doesn't forgive these things. So he's out of the team for a while. Now he's slowly coming back in, but I think he really adds a lot. What do you think, uh, Richard? So, you know, it's funny, and I'm going to catch a lot of flack for this, but you can ask everyone that I talked to here. When I first watched him come on, he just didn't, he never had the pace for me. Like, I, it, if you ever watch him, he's not someone that's just going to outrun anybody to the ball. And, and offensively, I wasn't too happy with him. I yeah, just said, yeah. what's this guy doing? You know, I, I don't understand. He's not fast. He doesn't have the offensive, uh, you know, quality that I've seen uh in, in you know wingers um and if you ever watch all of his games especially when he's moving forward he doesn't beat any he, he usually gets caught from behind almost all the time so I, I was just perplexed on it and but you know and then when he plays now under Mourinho's system I don't think that's what they want him to do I think he's a typical you know Jose player meaning he go he, he covers the entire field pitch um and he's more defensive than he is offensive he helps both ways and so I, I can't understand him. He's a he's one of those players I just don't have a feel for. I just know I'm I'm resigned to the fact that when he's in, we do better, uh, and when yeah. he's out, we we haven't done well. So I I, it's very, you know, I don't expect him with Kane and Son to be the goal scorer. You know, with Liverpool that was tough. But he's he's a Dutch international. You know, he's a top player, and he's mainly bought for his offensive, his attacking skills. But in a Mourinho team, he's got to defend. So. Unfortunately, he spends all of his time defending, so you don't see his attacking prowess. Yeah, I just, I've never seen his attacking prowess. I just, I'm just one of those guys. I just, yeah, no, it's difficult. It. But he scored a great goal against Man City when he, he saw his, yeah. his debut. But, but after that, you're right, he hasn't done much. I think it's difficult. So he came from the Dutch league to the yeah. Premier League. It's really difficult for foreign players to settle into the Premier League. So Agreed. that's why if you've got a foreign player that's played in the Premier League for a few seasons done well, they're like gold dust because they're proven. Yeah, I agree. Look, Look at Andombele. He's come from France and he's taken him a whole season to settle in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that guy, I mean, yesterday was, I've always sort of been a fan of his, um, the, the, uh, you know, I don't think anybody, why would you ever press that guy? I mean, I, he is so calm and cool under pressure and what he does, you know, it's just, I can't explain when the first time I watched him play, I said, man, there's nobody that moves like he does. There's nobody that protects the ball like he does. And now, He's got the fitness, and I, I think it's it's just interesting because I'm a huge Delhi fan, right? Yeah, so yeah. you've had two things that have happened under Jose Mourinho, where um, you know this is what he does. He he, he basically is vocal and, and criticizes you yeah. know his team in front of the media, and it seems like the two players you were I was worried about in Dombelli leaving, and then somehow he's embraced it, and he played 90 minutes yesterday. Probably had goal of the year, the uh, Pushkash yeah, exactly. report. I mean, goal of the season, yeah. The goal of the season, and then on the on the flip side, you have what's going on with Delhi. So it's it's super hard, but um, you know we got to move on and upward. And uh, and Dombele yesterday was he's he's been a, he's amazing most of the time. I mean, so what's your overall view on the performance? Give us your thoughts on the performance, attacking wise, defending wise. You know, how did you see the match? So we went one 0 up through the Aurier goal, and then did you think we sat back or did we then try and get a second goal? What did you think? No, I thought we. I mean, Son should have. Um, scored right, so yeah, yeah, sure. that, I mean, you know, he's had a couple. You know, uh, look, uh, Son is world class, but he, you know, two games in a row where he should have finished. Yeah. So no, I, 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 so I think this was a game where I actually believe Josie this time. You know, the last couple of times when he went to the yeah. press conference and said, "No, nobody I, I told believes players, him. Just, nobody believes him." This, this one, I, I do believe we went forward, um, and and we still had chances, and we, I think it was the formation with, I mean, Reggion. Yeah, that guy. I, I don't know how he does. I mean, he covers the entire pitch and 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 always presses forward. The Oriate was the same way. So no, I mean, after Kane got his goal, um, I I still thought we came out on the front foot, and then they had that set, you know, that header. Um, and what were your feelings? Like, what were your feelings after this made it two one? Did you think here we go again? I did. 
I did, but then, you know, with that lineup out there, I just felt like we were going to, you know, after saw and miss, I said, it, it, we just can't have, we can't keep getting unlucky. And there is some truth to what Jose says in the games where we should have closed, right? We, we've hit the crop, we've hit the bar, we've missed wide open uh, net shots. You know, you mentioned Bergwine, Son. Um, there's just, you know, Kane hitting a header into the ground. So I figure our luck had to turn at some point. And then, you know, in Don Belly's goal was just, Again, amazing, wasn't it? Yeah, amazing. So, I mean, that's what he does, though. He's yeah, just yeah. you can make a whole highlight reel halfway through the year of the guy. Yeah, he's amazing. Right? It's amazing. Yeah, so but um, okay, so it's a good win for us. Don't forget, we have to look at the opposition, it's the bottom team. So, yeah, you know, I, mean, I mean, if you play against a better team, they're gonna probably stick away. We we missed a few chances as well, though. Don't you think Harry Kane missed quite a few chances? Yeah, you know, he's. Uh, well, I don't know which one. I, so he he had a, quite a few chances. He had a shot on goal near the end. He had another couple yeah. of shots. But you know, yeah. against a better team, we miss those, we lose. Against Sheffield, we get away with it. So we got to right. be careful about those things. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's what what, what we've seen in the last four or five games is just we've just got to like, and we've heard this over and over. But we've got to kill it. We've got to hit the these chances, and everybody's done it from Son, uh, you know, to Kane, uh, to Bergwijn. Um, so hopefully moving forward, they'll, they'll just start dropping for us. And I think there's a bit of, I don't want to say luck to it, but it'll swing our way. And, and look, at the end of the day, I keep, you know, like you're on social media and you follow them every day, you know, when we tie or we drop points, it's Jose Mourinho. And God, I mean, it, it gets annoying after a while. But, you know, yesterday, even though it was Sheffield, I sat back and said, listen, guys, we're in all competitions. We're currently sitting fifth. Like we're, we're good. Let's just everyone relax. We've got to win something, though, Richard. It's been a long time since he won anything. It's good to be, you know, in the hunt. Yeah. But you've got to actually get over. You've got to get over the line. I think we've got a chance anyway. It's really good. So do we. So do I. So, um, I can't let you go really without talking about Deli Ali. You've mentioned him a few times. He, he's, he triggers a lot of conversation here. Some pros yeah. some against. Personally, I'll give you my view, and then we talk about what you think. But Deli Ali doesn't fit into the Mourinho style of play in terms of tracking back and you know yeah. helping out doing it. So he's more of a flair player. He'll come into the box, score goals. So what do you think about Deli? And what do you think? Do you think he's got a future at Tottenham? Um, I, unfortunately, I don't. You know, I've been a fan ever since he came on. So yeah. even before, so I've watched his whole career, and, yeah. and probably like you have, and 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 I don't think it would go without a doubt. He's going to go down as one of the best, you know, I think he's one of the best Tottenham players in that, yeah. in that three or four years period that he had. I mean, he's just, he was there. And, and I think he was part of the resurrection of yeah. his club. I mean, yeah. we went from, you know, the, the days of Andre Villas Boas into Pochettino and he was there the whole time. And um, so it's, it's, it's been hard. I mean, it look with any conversation and, and, people you talk to within the spur, you know, all the supporters, it, it, it's, we like him, and I know it's time to move on. I know he's not on, you know, it, it, we got to get with the current club. I get all that. It's just hard because he's been so great um, for us, but no, he doesn't fit in. It's clearly painfully obvious. Um, I, I, I don't understand the way, you know, it's, it seems like he hasn't been treated fair. I just wish they would kind of, you know, let him go off, you know, if he wants to go to PSG or wherever he goes. Yeah. Maybe loan them out, but um, it's getting bad. I don't want it to end like this. You know, I thought we were, I thought we were going to fix everything after the the Marine game, and he he was on there and he was great again. When you talk about it was Marine, right? Yeah, you know, it's, but, it's like, I mean, this 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 really it's like it's yeah. like the Buffalo, it's like the it's like the New Orleans Saints playing a little a small college team yeah. in downtown so, Alabama or something. It's just. But, like, it, it seemed up like that up until that point, he just got this glimmer of hope, like, Oh, maybe he's getting back in with, yeah. with Jose. And then, oh, you know, oh. then he sent out the, the, the yeah. Instagram photo. And so it's, you know, I think for everybody, it's just time to move on, wish him well, just like we did Pochettino. I mean, yeah, everyone exactly. loved him. It's I, I love Pochettino. So uh, it's time to just wish him well and, and move on. You're right. He doesn't fit his style. He's not defensive enough. Um, and so I don't know what he, he would ever play, right? So. so he wasn't even in the squad, Richard. He didn't even get into the squad. So if you're not even in the squad, you know, what, what the hell is what's going on there? Yeah. And that was the thing. Like I said, everyone thought after the Marine game, like this, he would be in the squad. And yeah. you hear all these, you know, working hard and doing all this stuff and not even selected. Really so it's time to go, time to move on. Yeah. All right, buddy. Listen, it's been great chatting to you. It's a really, yeah, thank you. A, a really good chat with your analysis, and you know, we really look forward to you 
uh, speaking again on the Spurs 95 Over One podcast. And um, time, man. keep all I would say to you is come on, you Spurs. <laughs> come on, you Spurs. And we'll see you again on the next podcast. Yeah, come on, you Spurs. Tottenham until I die. Take care. Thanks for the.